Let's talk about source operations. The different ways to get a stream are called source operations. We use these source operations to create streams in our code. Stream is just a type of object. We're going to see the following ways to create streams. We're going to be creating a stream from a collection, creating a stream from an array. We're also going to use two methods, the stream.iterate method to generate a stream and the stream.generate method. Let's move over to IntelliJ. Let's start with the first, creating a stream from a collection. Well, in order to do that, we need a collection. Let's create a simple collection of names. And I'm going to use the rabbit names that my daughter has. So let's go ahead and say arrays as list. And then let's specify the rabbits. They're very original rabbit names. And then we can go ahead and create a stream of type string. And let's just call this the name stream. Import stream from Java util stream. And then go ahead and simply say names.stream. And that's it. We have created our first stream. We could do something similar with an array, but then we'll use the arrays.stream. And it's a little bit different because we do need the static method for this. So let's create the array. I don't want a space there. Same names. So here's how to create the stream this time. Again, it's going to be type string. And let's just call this names array stream. So instead of going names array dot stream, that doesn't exist. We can say arrays, the helper class, and then go stream and pass in the array that we want to turn into a stream. And there we go. This should take care of it. So I find myself using these quite a lot. The dot stream in particular. Let's see how we can create a stream using the stream.iterate method. And this is where we start to need lambda expressions already. So let's just start by creating infinite stream of integers. And what we're saying here is stream.iterate. And iterate is really going to do that. It's going to iterate. We need to specify a seed and then an iterator. So the seed is going to be the starting point, which is zero. And then I need to go ahead and specify how I'm going to get to the next value. And here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to say n as our input, and then just do n plus 1. So this is going to increase the variable 1 infinitely. We can use method on the streams to stop this, so don't worry. So let's go ahead and use the generate method. We're again going to create an infinite stream, because the generate method is going to be called until it's going to be told to stop doing this. So let's go ahead and say stream double. And let's just call this random numbers stream. And then we're going to say stream.generate. And now, well, we might as well start using a lambda. We might as well start using a method reference already. We're going to use the math.random here. All right, so this is four ways to create streams. And we're going to use this a lot. But there are a few important notes that I definitely should make here. And the first one is that streams can only be used once. After a terminal operation is called, the stream is closed and cannot be reused anymore. If you try to do that anyways, you'll get an exception explaining that you can't do that. The second important note is that streams are lazily evaluated. And that means that they won't be executed until a terminal operation is called. In this case, we're not calling a terminal operation yet, and therefore nothing really happens still. So let's see how to get some action up there. In the next video, we're going to explore terminal operations in the Stream API and demonstrate how we can use them to complete the Stream pipeline. This way, our streams are actually executed.